in this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Job chapter 25, verses 1 through 6, where I'll ask the question, can a man be right before God? Job chapter 25, verses 1 through 6 says, Then Bildad the Shuhite answered and said, Dominion and fear are with God. He makes peace in his high heaven. Is there any number to his armies? Upon whom does his light not arise? How then can man be in the right before God? How can he who is born of woman be pure? Behold, even the moon is not bright, and the stars are not pure in his eyes. How much less a man who is a maggot, and the son of man who is a worm. Job, in making his arguments to his friends that God has been unjust towards him, says before Bildad answers that if he could stand before God and plead his case, then the Lord would declare him innocent. But Job's friend looks at him and says, listen, can a man be right before God? Is it even possible for a person, a created being, to be right in the presence of the almighty, omnipotent, infinite creator? And his answer, obviously, is no. But what Bildad kind of messes up is his anthropology a little bit. Because mankind, when they were created, were created what? They were created good. In fact, the Lord steps back after creating for those six days, and he declares it all very good. So, in a sense, what Bildad is saying is true because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But in another sense, what he's saying is wrong because God did create everything and declared it all good. With these ideas sort of floating around in mind, here are three thoughts from Job chapter 25, verses 1 through 6, answering the question, can a man be right before God? Thought number one, a created being. What we need to know, first and foremost, is that we are created beings. And this is what Job's friend is sort of putting forward. He's putting forward this idea that in comparison with God, you're obviously not right. In comparison to God, in his infinite, omnipotent wisdom, you are obviously in the wrong. You're in the wrong simply by your own nature. You're in the wrong because you are a created being. And as a created being, you don't even have the right to say anything to your maker. You don't have the right to make any complaint before God. And this is something that he gets right. We don't have a right to say anything to our creator, to our maker. Paul echoes that sentiment in Romans 9. What is the pot to say to the potter? Why did you make me like this? That's silliness. It's silliness for us to complain to God who made us that he didn't make us in the right way. Thought number two, a divine being. We are a created being, but God is a divine being. So there is a distinction and a difference between us and God. And that distinction should be pretty obvious to all of us. Bildad points it out. He says, can anybody number the Lord's armies? Can anybody even consider his great power? He points out that God is over and above all things, that he is the one who makes everything in existence. So even the concept, even the idea that you can make an argument before God who has made you about anything is silliness. God is a divine being, and he is in a different category. He has a completely different nature than any and all created beings. Because of that, we don't have a right to stand before God and plead our case. Because he is the divine being who created us. So can a man be right before the divine being that has made us? No, of course not. He has made us. Thought number three, God accomplishes it. So if we ask the question, can a man be right before God? And our default answer is no, because we are created beings and God is a divine being, then obviously we would never be able to be right before God before all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But this is the beauty, and it's something that Bildad misses. This is the beauty of God interacting with his creation. Because in the incarnation, the divine takes on flesh, 
and lives out the perfect life and takes on the punishment of those whom he has chosen as his own. So can a man be right before God? Well, certainly not on his own. But God can accomplish this incredible act. And this is precisely what he has done in the person and work of Jesus Christ. This is exactly what has happened. In Christ, man is made right before God. And that's the beautiful news. That is the good news of the gospel. That this insurmountable task of being made right with God has already been accomplished for us in Christ Jesus. The divine takes on flesh and suffers the penalty of sin. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Job chapters 25 and 26. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.